Has-Been Hotel has some of the most interesting character designs in animated series. As the series takes place in the afterlife, many of the angels and demons we see in the series have unique appearances that relate to their lives as humans or the powers they wield. A fun component of the narrative is that these characters have numerous forms, from their everyday looks to their wrathful true forms, which usually only appear when in dire need. Some of these appearances expand on the character's story and show what they're capable of. In this video, we're discussing who has shown their true forms and what they look like. You come at me and my daughter! Don't forget! Number 1. Charlie As the Princess of Hell, it's no surprise that Charlie has a demonic form that matches her beloved home. Throughout most of the series, Charlie maintains an appearance similar to humans. She also takes after her parents sharing their hair color and Lilith's height. Compared to other characters we see throughout the series, Charlie looks the least threatening, always dressed to impress in her suit, as she's always trying to make new friends and have a good first impression. It makes sense that she would want to look as approachable as possible. However, Charlie can't always keep her demonic side contained. Her appearance shifts when she's stressed or threatened, as if it's a survival instinct that has helped her navigate hell. The first instance of Charlie's partial form is in Overture, when Adam condemns Hell, refuses to accept the Hasbin Hotel, and tells her about the second extermination. Charlie's partial form includes horns and red eyes, mimicking the token appearance of most demons in other media. Charlie never needs to summon all of her power, but after losing Serpentius in The Show Must Go On, she does everything possible to avenge him and stop Adam from hurting anyone else. She undergoes a transformation sequel, bringing her horns, changed eyes, and demon tail into battle with her. Charlie may receive a power boost in this state as she transforms Razzle and Dazzle into dragons to help her fight. Huh! Razzle, Dazzle! Ah! Number 2. Lucifer Once an angel from heaven, Lucifer has fallen far since tempting Eve with an apple in the Garden of Eden. It devastated him to be sent to hell, where he had little choice but to help Lilith in building a new empire. When the series begins, he believes sinners have squandered their potential with free will and they deserve their current fates. He seems to dislike his new home and prefers to keep to himself, going so far to avoid a meeting with heaven by sending Charlie in his place. We can assume that Lucifer has maintained much of his appearance from his time in heaven, with an outfit that includes apple and snake-themed embellishments. Lucifer has no reason to show his true form until the show must go on. He arrives at the last second to save Charlie from Adam, forcing the other man into a one-on-one -on -one fight. Fully enraged by Adam, threatening his daughter, Lucifer shows his true form, including three pairs of wings, horns, sharpened teeth, the same red eyes as Charlie, and the train of his coat adorning several watchful eyes. So this is what you've been up to since Eden? I gotta say, you let yourself go, buddy. <laughs> you judging me? Number 3. Zestiel As one of the oldest overlords in Hell, Zestiel has made a reputation for himself. When he appears in Scrambled Eggs, he's unafraid to approach Alistair and infer about his extended absence. While most sinners would think twice about gossiping with the radio demon, Zestiel clarifies that he has nothing to fear from his fellow demons due to his demeanor. All it takes for lesser demons to flee or harm themselves to avoid him is for Zestiel to walk down the street, meaning he is well known and feared in their community. Zestiel may be one of the eldest demons in the Pride Ring. He speaks in an old dialect and maintains a collected, proper, and sophisticated grace when interacting with the other overlords. His appearance mirrors these traits and may reflect the period he is originally from. Tall and spider-like, Zestiel wears a long black cloak and a matching hat. The cloak is a primary part of his character design, as it has a secondary appearance with spider motifs. Currently, it's unknown if Zestiel unfurling his coat is his way of showing his true form. When he opens his cloak in Scrambled Eggs, the underside includes green fabric with red webbing, while his eyes glow and change colors. Interestingly, Lucifer's coat and eyes change appearances when using his demon form, so updated clothing could be a regular facet of full demon transformations. If so, Zestiel has already provided a glimpse of his true power, and we may see more in future episodes. Your mind, Alistair. Thou hast been not with an enigma since thy manifested in this realm. Number 4. The Seraphim Like the demons, some of the angels have true forms. When Charlie and Vaggy arrive at Heaven's Gate in Welcome to Heaven, they're greeted by two Seraphim who give them a tour. The High Seraphim, Sarah, acts like the current leader of Heaven and leads the Council of Angels. Unlike demons, they seem to make themselves look more human to become more approachable to Charlie and former humans. When they first arrive at Heaven's Gates, they're adorning their true forms. However, it's worth mentioning that Sarah and Emily look different while in this state. As the Elder Seraphim, Sarah has more to her true form. She has three pairs of wings that carry her through the air, long feathered hair, and eyes scattered throughout her appearance. The eyes appear on her wings, shoulders, and dress train, indicating that she may see numerous things. 
Her overall design resembles the Owl-themed characters in the spin-off Hell of a Boss, like Stolas and Stella. In comparison, Emily has a much more modest appearance. Her true form includes a plain face with an oval-shaped head. She has three eyes like Sarah, with a third one resting in the center of her forehead. Her wings are a much smaller three pairs that protrude from her head. Her pendant changes to be another large blue eye, while the train of her dress includes eye-like patterns that may represent all seraphim. St. Peter, we can take it from here. Greetings, daughter of the Morning Star. I am Sarah, the High Seraphim of Heaven. Number 5. Vaggie Although Vaggie seems like an average sinner when she appears in the pilot, we later learn from Adam in Welcome to Heaven that she was once an exorcist who was left for dead. In the flashback, we see Vaggie's old appearance, including her short hair, golden eyes, halo, and wings. However, her heavenly appearance is mutilated by loot when she refuses to kill a child sinner. She loses one eye and her wings are cut off by an angelic weapon. After the extermination, she's found by Charlie, who helps nurse her back to health and start her new life. After spending years in hell, Vaggie has given up on heaven and what the angels stand for. She knows they can be cold and unforgiving, and after the truth about her origins comes out, she's willing to do anything to stop Adam and protect her new home. In Hello, Rosie, she approaches Carmilla about the secret to killing angels. Although Carmilla has no interest in joining the fight, she takes time to train Vaggie on the exorcist's weaknesses and how to overcome them. Her most significant advice is to fight for love rather than vengeance. And once Vaggie decides to fight with love in her heart, she regains her wings, implying she never truly fell from heaven. You think we asked for this? All Charlie has ever done is try to make things better, to help her people who newsflash include your people too. Number 6. Alistair Alistair is a prominent member of the Hasbin Hotel. He helps Charlie manage the establishment by making commercials, handling day-to-day -day problems, and protecting others from threats. Alistair has a reputation in Hell as a cruel overlord with a habit of torturing his enemies. Throughout the series, he uses smaller scaled versions of his demon form to instill fear in or unsettle those around him. The first time we witness Alistair's true form is in Dad Beat Dad, after a group of loan sharks track Mimsy to the hotel. Although he likely didn't need to use the full force of his power, he did so to remind everyone what he was capable of. In his fully demonic state, Alistair grows in size, his limbs extend, and he towers over his enemies. His horns also grow larger, while he summons tentacles and shadows that he weaponizes to attack his enemies. His full form appears briefly in The Show Must Go On when he's facing off against Adam. However, he's overpowered by the angel and must flee the fight. I will tear your soul apart and broadcast your screams for every other disrespectful wretch! Although most angels and demons experience their day-to-day -day lives with more mundane appearances, they'll embrace their true forms when in a fight or needing to establish their power. We've seen the more influential characters flaunt the full extension of their abilities, with Alistair, Charlie, and Lucifer using all they have to defend themselves and the Hasbin Hotel. However, hundreds of people in heaven and hell have yet to show their full potential, including the other hotel residents. Hopefully, they'll have their chance to show what they're capable of in future seasons. We are gathered here today to determine whether or not a soul in hell can be redeemed into the heavenly realm. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. Ha ha ha! It was actually my idea. Ha ha ha! Well, it's not very clever! Ha ha!